Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another of these uh, live Star Wars interviews. Now, I say live, but really it's just recorded live so that I don't have to edit it because it's just a lot of work to get everything scheduled and get everybody together. I am Spencer Brinkerhoff III. This is Studio SB3 Live, and we're talking today with Star Wars artist Chrissy Chung. Welcome to the show. Hi. Chrissy, um, dinner all done? Let me see your teeth. Did you get it all taken care of? Good? Good. You're fantastic. <laughs> Chrissy, we had a little bit of a scheduling conflict. You were traveling for your birthday. Is that what you were doing? And then you're in New York. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. Where were you going to travel? Uh, I went to Iceland. What? What's in Iceland? <laughs> um, horses. Yes. Whales. And puffins. <laughs> <laughs> So, wait, doesn't New York have a fabulous zoo? I mean, I don't know what... <laughs> yeah, and at the um, Natural History Museum, there's that really huge whale, too. Right? But, you know. <laughs> oh, there you go. That sounds like a fabulous trip. Now, did yeah, you plan fun. that as being part of your birthday, like it was your own birthday celebration, or it had just happened to coincide that you were taking some time off and it was your birthday? Um, my boyfriend planned it, actually. And wow. it was my dirty 30, so, <laughs> you know, had to go big, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Before you turn 40 yeah. you know, or something, right? <laughs> now, Chrissy, the, the, uh, now help me out. I think that this is your, is this your very first Star Wars Celebration event? Yep. Now, um, a part of the sort of the, the, the requirement, well, first off, congratulations and Thank welcome. You. Thank um, you. What was that? What was that like? Have you tried out for other Star Wars shows and um, and it didn't happen, or what Star Wars sort of like properties were you working with before and you decided to kick in? How did this come about? What's the story there? So I looked into Celebration like maybe two or three years ago, okay. and they said that you had to be licensed, and I wasn't at the time. So last year, I um, event at uh, Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle every year it's just a really awesome convention right. cool people chill con so um the people from we love fine saw my work and they're like oh we should put that on a t-shirt talk oh, to this awesome. guy yeah so i went and talked to the guy who started it and like um they were like yeah we'd love for you to like go legit with star wars and <laughs> <laughs> go legit the there it is yeah. go legit finally <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's so a it's a crazy cool kind of a thing, right? So on the one hand, you, you I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you love Star Wars, right? Yeah. <laughs> so on the one hand, you love Star Wars and you want to be part of it and you have this this talent that is just fantastic and you want to draw Star Wars. And so you're drawing these things and 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 in for me, I have a little bit of that sort of like pull back and forth. It's like it's fan art, but I'm selling it. And I, well, I shouldn't be selling it, but I am selling it. And guess what? They, they like it. So now I, I'm, I'm gone legit, you know, and, and now I'm part of the whole event. It's, it's awesome. I think that I, I recently saw some of the new Star Wars Celebration pins. And um, I believe the artist that did all of those is Derek Lofman, which again, you know, he's just doing fan art and now he's here. So what was your first sort of like Star Wars piece that you did with uh, We Love Fine? Um, so those were my uh, episode seven portraits. Okay. Um, but I had to change them to skin color because they were like, oh, blue looks too much like Avatar. Can you please change the skin tone? <laughs> <laughs> so just a little bit of art direction there. We'd like them to have yeah. skin tones. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I also did these Art Nouveau posters for um, the original trilogy. And so they wanted to put that on shirts. And then I had a Leia and R2 piece um, with like a watercolor backdrop and everything. And they wanted that on a shirt as well. So, That's so awesome. Couple things. Now, are those yeah. are those all still available, or, or or do they do a limited edition run? Where can people find um, those shirts? And are there art prints with those as well, or is it just T-shirts that they do? Uh, they only have a T-shirt license. Okay. So it's only T-shirts with them uh, for Star Wars. But if you go to welovefine.com, they're up on there. Um, they're also going to be at Celebration. Okay. They have a booth. And they're bringing, like, only Star Wars shirts. Oh, awesome. So, 
Yeah, my stuff will be there. I'll have a couple shirts at the table. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so and you're it's gonna a, it's a you're gonna wear your own shirt every day at the convention, you know, <laughs> just to sort of like like hey, I did this right here. That's the plan, right? <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> no, it's not weird. I mean, it would be weird if you walked around the whole time going, look at my chest. You know, I'm the Star Wars artist that did this. But it's not weird if you're just kind of wearing it because it's yours. You know, that's cool. <laughs> I challenge you, do it. Oh, you know what else okay. you can do? Ready? You can you can get them to send you some, some shirts and you can cut them out and stretch them over some frames and you can call them canvas. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a repurposed art. Now, your your artwork, it has a very unique style. I, I, I love what you're doing, and I believe that you're doing it all vector. So what's the process that you go about, like, sort of, like, creating the art? You know, are, are you sketching things out, or do you sketch, like, in the computer? You know, what, what's the process for you to go from idea to final piece? Uh, so I normally start uh, with a lot of research. <laughs> yes. Um, you have to I watch like, the movies. You have to yeah. listen to the movies. Then you read the books, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff. <laughs> Consult a few nerds. You right, know? <laughs> right. Um, so do <laughs> a ton of research. Um, I like to know, like, backstory about characters. Like, what's their home world? Do, you know, like, things right. like that. Just to see if I can use any maybe the color scheme or just maybe something might inspire something else. Um, so I always start there and then I start thumbnail sketches first, try to get the composition. Um, and then it's a lot of, uh, and then refining the sketch and then using photo reference plus sketches and a combination. But yeah, I use illustrator, Adobe illustrator to oh, do awesome. most of my stuff. Yeah. Now then, when sort of as you're adding this sort of like the details to it, and you're getting into sort of the background of the characters, are you looking for small like because it's you know a vector, you can really get in there and do some small details. Are you adding in you know some some backstory? Are you um, trying to sort of like create sort of like some representations of you know where they're from and where they're going and more history to them, so that there's there's a dimension to the piece. Is that part of your consideration in putting it all together? Yeah, so like for my Rogue One pieces, uh, there wasn't much because the movie wasn't really out yet. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, but there was some stuff. Like I was able to find out like um, the Saw Gerrera character, the Forrest huh? Whitaker character. Like he's actually from Clone Wars. So I watched like all those episodes. Awesome. And I was like, oh, so, you know, they were doing stuff on this planet. He led a resistance and I, I took some of the... Um, like foliage from Clone Wars and put it into that piece and it was kind of tropical background so that's right. why his background is pink because in those um in the Clone Wars it was like a pink horizon and right background and black leaves and so I, I took the, that the palm trees kind of up at the top that are sort of like yeah. breaking out to the edges yeah 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 and it had these like weird leaves that looked really cool that had holes in them so I was like oh cool I'll draw that too right right <laughs> but I, I didn't know the character was going to be like gone in like 15 minutes <laughs> 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 but <laughs> I guess yeah. if you're like a huge Star Wars fan you'll know like oh snap he's from like the right. Clone Wars series right. and he has a backstory he did all this badass stuff like <laughs> Well, and he and he gets to come back again. He was in uh, two episodes for Star Wars Rebels, and I suspect that he'll be back next season for Rebels as well. Well, we'll have to watch and see. Maybe they'll show him like not being the bald guy and into sort of like that crazy hair. So he'll Sorry, grow it was into Rebels, your character. Not, it was clone, not Rebels. No, it was, it was Rebels, not Clone Wars, right? No, no, no. Like... You were you were correct. So, okay. uh, so, so <laughs> like, no, it's yeah. You got it. Your nerd credit is still there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So he started in uh, the Clone Wars, Saw Gerrera did, but then uh, sort of like the Star Wars Rebels is making its its like progression closer and closer to the events of A New Hope and um, as well as, you know, uh, Rogue One. And so Saw Gerrera actually showed up in part of it, sort of like that transition. But yeah, you were, you're right. Don't, don't question yourself. So... <laughs> So that was uh, that was what you did with Saw. Um, how about with uh, with mm -hmm. Jin and her piece? Uh, so, so there wasn't much about her backstory online because it was like huge plot point in the movie. So I right. just didn't want to spoil it. Um, 
but what I did find was uh, the Yavin 4. So I used Yavin 4 as the background. Right. Um, with the Jedi Temple and the forest. And um, that was mainly her. Oh, and like the, I kind of wanted to make it like a astronomical chart almost. Okay. Or like a map. Um, so that's why like those circles and the grid kind of looks like that. So that was the thought process behind hers. That's awesome. And so, <laughs> and you have the repeating triangles in there as well. So there's a triangle mm -hmm. up near the top that's pointing down and then it sort of like frames her as well and points down to, you know, her like midriff there, not midriff, sorry, mm -hmm. her middle as well. So then the lines all around it. And then just behind her face, do we also see little bits of the Death Star in there as well? Is that what that circular yep. pattern is? Yep. Plans for the Death Star. Awesome. So I used the reference from, what was it, A New Hope? Uh-huh. Right, when Mon Mothma was showing them showing the map the plans. and everything. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, I used that as the reference for that. That's when they were uh, when they were telling the plans to how to destroy the Death Star, that part, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah, that's awesome. And then the last yeah. one that you have on there is... Uh, is, oh, cheer it. Cheer it. I pushed the yeah. wrong button for a second there. Let me, <laughs> I'm zooming in on the artwork so I can show that off really well. As, as, and So he has the triangles behind him similar to what um, what Jin did, but, I mean, he's got the double triangle. So yeah. when, you're, when you're putting together – and, again, probably we don't know a lot about him except for that he was on you know the, the planet there. But so when you're putting these things together and it's time for you to submit your – concept art um how do you decide sort of like which piece you're going to decide like did you put together a bunch of different ideas or did you say well i, I really like this character or this one what did you end up doing for your concept piece was it really close to what you've got here now or is it something completely different uh so when i spoke with our contact at lucas he was like oh have it be like as close to done as possible. So I just finished it. So what you see here is what I submitted. Really? <laughs> so that so means I, that you were done and you just sat there and they said, Hey, you're in the show. And you're like, yeah, I'm already yeah. done. No stress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, cool. That's amazing. Um, so they said that we could only have one piece. So I submitted all three and I was like, Oh, but I could put it together in a triptych. Oh, oh wait a second. Okay. Yeah. So this is the way it works, and we'll, I think I may have said this on a previous sort of like conversation, but you, you have to be an official sort of like Star Wars artist. You have to have done some official work, and then you can submit a concept piece, but you can only submit one piece. And so you thought, oh, I want to do these three characters, but I can't submit three. I'll just put them all together. And they were okay with it. No, it works wonderfully. Now, well, wait a second. Here's another question for you. Tell me, what size is the final art print that you're doing? It's 12 inches by 36. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. And massive. <laughs> it is massive. But yeah. I was, as I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, now, if somebody wanted to cut this up into three pieces, they couldn't quite do it because of uh, Charit's um, staff is sort of like – getting close to where uh where Jin is so i was thinking yeah. oh look it's like a three for one but you know it's it it has that little overlay there no that's yeah. awesome though sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> well i was just i, guess... I was wondering well, then if you would si sign it three critic. times yeah you can oh. <laughs> yeah you don't like that guy he was only in there for 15 seconds just cut him <laughs> out you know saw guerrera's out <laughs> that's awesome so um, it's, tell me again, 12 by 36. 36, yeah. And, um, I believe you're going to be part of the art show with, uh, the Acme group there and you're, you're not going to get your own booth outside? No. Okay. Now you had mentioned that you've been out to Emerald City Comic Con, so I didn't know if you wanted to sort of like venture out and try it on your own or if you were going to be into the, uh, Acme group. Um, well actually at Emerald I met another artist yeah. and he, uh, showed me the ways <laughs> so <laughs> i got a lot of insider info from him like what to expect and right because I, I had no idea it's so different than like the comic cons yes um so i i like had so many questions and he was just so nice and really open and i, I owe him <laughs> that's awesome who, who was it you you want to say who it was or uh yeah yeah it's jason christman oh yeah he's awesome yeah. 
Kisses. What? <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk to him already. So it, 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 okay. it, he's got his shout outs there. So then yeah. that that's one of the other things that, that I've experienced as being part of these shows that's, that's different than, you know, going to a normal sort of a comic convention is that we're sort of like all thrown in this together. And there's this experience element that happens, too. So before the show even opened, you know, in Anaheim, we're all sort of like milling around. We're talking to each other and they're doing that opening ceremony, sort of a panel. And we're all standing there like watching it up on the big screen screen over like the Hasbro booth or something. And they're playing <laughs> the trailer for The Force Awakens for the first time. Uh -oh. And we're just going. Wah! So, I mean. It's a completely different experience, and you're going to have a fantastic time. <laughs> Are you going to be there? I'm actually – I'm not going to be able to make this show. So, I mean, to sort of like – yeah, I know. Here we are, brand new friends, and we're, we're, we're going to have to stay internet friends for a while. <laughs> well, because you're not doing it next year either. Right. It's Wait. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So, I don't know what their schedule is. Did you, did you say that they've already announced that they're going to skip a year? Yeah, they're going to skip a year and then right. do it in 19. See, and that's the way that they had originally started is that they have one celebration and then they'd wait, wait a year and then another one. And then they started doing the international ones and those were the alternate years. And so we'd have uh, stateside and then international. There was one in London and then Germany. Oh, and Japan. I'm sorry, Japan what? and then Germany. And then there was one that was uh, back in London was the last one. So last okay. year was London. Yeah. So I'm afraid that if you keep on getting involved in these Star Wars shows, you're going to have to travel all around the world. You know, if, Iceland, you know, that's OK. But maybe, yeah. you know, Japan, that would be cool, too. Right. Yeah, I've been <laughs> once. I go back. <laughs> that, that was actually the, the first show that I got to go to with the Star Wars guys it was in Japan. So cool. <laughs> now, in, um, I didn't, forgot to ask you um, what the what your print is selling for. How much is it? Oh, uh, 60. Sixty dollars, and that's available right now on Dark Ink Art for uh, pre-orders. Correct? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so you have, and I've been telling everybody this, and I want to remind them again: is that if you get out there and buy it on Dark Ink Art now, then you don't have to fight the lines to purchase it and run the risk of not being able to pick it up. So the, you're only allowed to sell like what half of the prints, you know, in the pre-order. I think up to fifth. Is it 50? I'm not sure. I think it might have been more than that. Know. Maybe 100. Maybe. <laughs> yes. So, you know, just not all of them. You can't sell all of them before you actually get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so in addition to um, having the, uh, the art print there at the show, you said that you're going to have some shirts as well? Yep. I'm going to have some T-shirts. I'm bringing the uh, Episode 7 portraits. So it's okay. uh, Ray, Finn, and Poe. Awesome. Um, I think I have a couple of the original trilogy ones and like one or two of the Princess Leia and R2-D2 ones. So. That's awesome. I wonder, I, I'm, I, I was joking a little bit about cutting up the shirts and making it into a print. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it, what's always difficult with uh, T-shirts at a convention is you don't know how much to stock. You don't know what size is it again. Yeah. So, so if you just cut up a couple of shirts, I don't know if you need to treat them or anything like that to make sure that they'll stand up a little bit better. But, you know, <laughs> art prints sort of, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, in case I run out of prints. <laughs> right, right. You you just have uh, these other offerings. Now, it, yeah. well, that's another question is, as well. Is in addition to having your art prints there in the t-shirts, there are some of the artists that do some sketching. And I didn't know if sort of like how comfortable you were with that, like with other shows. Do you do any sort of like sketching? Are you going to have any sort of original artwork there that you're going to offer in addition to the, uh, the print work? Uh, so I am going to do pre-con uh sketches okay i already have one person who sent me a sketch cover and he's just gonna pick it up there which is great um but as far as other stuff like i i don't know i'm kind of on the fence if i want to do like commissions on site right um because it's kind of hard to like have to talk to people and i want to meet people and, i know you know and seeing yeah. 
that's one of the things I was talking with Russ Walks about is is that mm-hmm. number one, Russ doesn't ever sit down at a convention. <laughs> he, oh. he has the chairs in the back. He's he's done. But his his one of the things that he really enjoys is engaging with people and talking. Mm-hmm. And if you're just concentrating on drawing the whole time, then it's hard to sort of like have that communication. And then yeah. If you take a bunch of commissions and you have to take them back to your room and work yeah. on those all night, you kind of miss out on the rest of the event that's happening. You know, Disney Adventures, the uh, 501st Bash, you know, the, the mm-hmm. dinners out with the other artists and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's not a bad plan at all. Not, not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just do everything before and then party when we get there. <laughs> right. Now, uh, some of the other things that I was interested in learning some more about you and about the rest of the work that you do is that you had mentioned that you had been out to Emerald City Comic Con, but you're in New York. So do you travel a lot to go to a lot of different shows? And, and are you, is this like a full-time job? Do you full-time freelance or you have some other projects that you're working on that are sort of like the steady gig in addition to doing the Star Wars art? Oh, all right. It's a lot, Starts isn't it? Top. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For, okay. One. Um, yes. <laughs> I do only two conventions, actually. Um, I do the one in New York. Right. Because it's local for me. I can just jump on the subway. Awesome. Um, and I also do Emerald City Comic Con because, like I said before, it's just, like, super chill. People are nice. Like, it's just a good con in general. Yes. Um, and I, I have friends that live in Seattle too, so it's kind of nice to get to see my friends once a year. <laughs> so then rule number one of conventions is you have to have a place to say that you're not paying for, right? <laughs> <laughs> that helps. But uh, actually, I found this like really awesome. We found this really awesome Airbnb that's like just a two minute walk from the convention center. Really? Super convenient. Yeah. Super clean, cozy, nice. Like, I'm saying do that. <laughs> that that's uh that's in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they, even though you do have friends there, you found some place that's even more convenient. So there's yeah. only two shows that you go to every year. Mm-hmm. Um, so then what are you doing the rest of the time if you're not traveling and doing? Oh no, actually, you're making all of the money that you need to for a year by just going to two shows. Then <laughs> right, you're done. <laughs> If only, so, right? so you said that wrong. You said, I only need to go oh, right. to two shows a year. Spencer, Sorry. don't you know who I am? <laughs> English fail. No. <laughs> so that's, that's the convention stuff, convention right. side. Yes. Um, so actually, I work full time at a Viacom network called TV Land. TV uh, Land. Yeah. That's so I awesome. Do art- art direction there for um on-air promos off-air stuff so like digital web print um and we work on original programming stuff so i used to work in commercials doing style frames and stuff like that um you, and were, so you weren't of... acting in commercials you what was no 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 i'm um, kind of <laughs> like <laughs> well actually my hand was used once for a chips ahoy commercial wow this one like this <laughs> Wait a second. Show me your hand again. I think I recognized it. Yeah, I totally. Oh, if people if people are interested in bringing Chips Ahoy to you, will you sign the Chips Ahoy boxes at the convention? Yes. OK, yes. excellent. <laughs> um, so you yeah. were working in commercials and you're doing the, the art direction on those as well? Kind of. Yeah. So it's um, it's broadcast now and it's a little bit different than the commercial world, um, kind of in the same vein. But, you know, their vocab is different than what I'm used to. And right. it's a different pace and like a structure is different and everything. But it's interesting to kind of see like both sides of like commercial and then also working like as the client. Because we hire a lot of post-production companies to do stuff for us. Right. And I was always on the other side. So it's kind of interesting to be client side now. <laughs> you like tell people what to do. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, so that's what I do during the day. And then um, for freelance stuff, I do comic covers as well as like some of the Star Wars stuff. And um, for the comic covers, I work with Valiant and IDW. Excellent. And are, are you working on any covers right now? What's the what's the last one that, that you've done that people would kind of go, oh, that's right. Because I hear and the reason I ask this is, is because 
for far too often it seems like people get associated with maybe a style but they don't get to know the artist's name well enough and so point out a couple of the ones that people would really recognize um, so that we can we can highlight those as well um so there is a cover that came out in february with valiant called harpinger renegade okay and i did a variant cover for that one um and then also there's one coming out, I think, in May, um, and it's for their Faith comic, and awesome. it's an Art Nouveau um, cover. I'm doing uh, six Star Trek variant covers for IDW. Really? Six of yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah. It's That's fun. Awesome. It's like the character portraits. Wait a second. Is it is it six variants of one issue, or is it six different issues that you're doing one variant of? Six different issues, okay. one variant. Of each. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it's like Captain Kirk, Spock, Sulu, like the whole the whole crew. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. And um, how and how did you how did you find that how did you find them, you know, that they kind of or did they track you down? Did they see your work online? Um how did that happen that you were able to start you know, working in the uh with the comic covers? Uh they just found me at Comic-Con. Really? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, in Artist Alley. Yeah. <laughs> Is, and now, is that New York? Are they there locally then? Uh, I know Valiant, I think, is based in New York, but IDW, I think, is L.A. or somewhere in California. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> somewhere, San Diego or something. I don't know. That's amazing. Well, you know what? Um, before we sort of like we're getting close to our uh, to our time here, I wanted to ask you if there's any if people wanted to follow you online, if they wanted to keep track of sort of like your new art, you know, your progress work. I don't know what 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 they're doing. Where what's the best way to get a hold of you if they wanted to follow your work? Oh, I love a shameless plug, Spencer. No, they're not shameless. <laughs> this get this is me and this is you. The whole thing is a plug. It's all about you. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so the best place to keep up with my stuff is uh, Instagram. Okay. And the handle is Chrissy Face. C R Y S S Y F A C E. One word. <laughs> Let me see if I can try something fancy here. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm I'm doing something. Say it again. It's Chrissy Face. Yeah. C R Y S S Y F A C E. And that's uh, Instagram. Look at this. So I uh, I've got I'm I'm trying to like add text. So I put up your um <laughs> your Twitter handle, which is Chrissy Chung. So Chrissy Face is Instagram. So I added a little bit live i i'm learning new tricks so uh yeah. there so on the instagram feed you're doing um you're you're showing off your new artwork are you doing any contests or anything fun like that as well yeah i do giveaways okay. um i post a lot of work in progress uh sorry to the fans haven't done a giveaway in a while it's been crazy right, right. <laughs> but um yeah uh sometimes i do giveaways with um this other account called force girls and um, they're a Star Wars-based Instagram. Uh, they post a lot of girls. Yeah. Uh, sometimes <laughs> that seems... not wearing a lot of clothes. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's a little disclaimer but... there. Force girls are, yeah, uh, yeah. they're all girl, you know. <laughs> well, not all. Like, she posts a lot of funny memes, too. So it's right. just like a Star Wars, like a Star Wars dump, basically, which gotcha. is cool. Yeah. But, but dump in a good way, you know, not yeah. like a sanitation sort of a thing. Oh, no, no. <laughs> a collection take, of Star Wars stuff. I'm going to take this to the Star Wars dump. <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph, you know, he, he was, lives in a Disney dump. <laughs> so, I'm so, yeah, we're getting random now. I know, so, right? <laughs> so, Chrissy, thank you so much for, uh, for chatting with me today all about you. Uh, I'm I'm so happy to get to know you a little bit better, and your artwork is is really it's fabulous. I love I love your vector style. I love the edges. I love the the detail that you're put into every one of these pieces. Yeah. Um. Tell me again, what's the title of your new piece? Uh, it's just Rogue One colon Heroes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. I was like, oh crap, we gotta make a title. Uh, that was me. <laughs> Rogue One Heroes. It is. Rogue One Heroes, it's 12 by 36 for $60. And 
and it's available right now for pre-order on Dark Ink Art. Um, you can follow Chrissy on her Instagram, which is Chrissy Face, or on um, uh, or on Twitter, which is Chrissy Chung, and that's C H O H C R Y S S Y C H E U N G. And I am Spencer Brinkerhoff III. You can follow me on S Spencer B3, and I'm recording this live from Studios B3. Chrissy, you're an excellent guest. Thank you. I'll do this again. Anything yeah. else you want to shout at anybody before we start out? Before we call this quits? Well, thanks for having me. Um, you're welcome. And hello to all my new Star Wars friends. Yes. Yay! <laughs> You're going to get the biggest Star Wars welcome that you have that you would have never imagined. Everybody who's on those Force Girls are going to be out there. Uh, the Instagram people are going to be there. And the Star Wars people, they just, they just love you. And, so, yeah. and, and it's, all, it, it, it's all deserving. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining us today. See you later. Bye-bye.